Last week something interesting happened in navigation. You might say that the navigational establishment finally came to its senses, but the US Navy decided to include astro-navigation or a basis of astro-navigation in its curriculum for young officers and also I understand for enlisted men too. Well that's a turn up isn't it? Ten years ago they scrapped it altogether because they reckoned it was no longer relevant in the age of GPS. Well, you can see the sense in that in a way. I mean, most of us who cross oceans these days don't get the sextant out of the box. But anyone with any brains at all takes one with him and he knows how to use it. But this has gone on the big ships. So it's been decided that they'll bring it back and I'm very pleased to hear it. Well, in the aftermath of this, amazingly, the BBC decided they would run a little feature on it in Newsnight, which is their flagship news programme for, um, comes on at uh, half past ten at night. And they hauled me up to London and got me to talk to the, uh, the population at large about astro-navigation. I was given three minutes to teach the presenter, who was an excellent fellow called Evan Davis. Three minutes to show him how astro-navigation worked. Well, you can imagine, that was a bit of a joke. You probably didn't see the programme, but it was an interesting idea. I haven't got three minutes now, but I'm, I'm going to show you essentially what it was. Um, and I'm going to show you, just in case you don't know, how a sextant actually functions and basically how we use the information it gives us to put a position on the chart. Here's how it works. This is my dear old sextant. I've had this for longer than I'd care to admit. It's a very old instrument, this. It was 1942 and it went round the North Cape with the convoys in World War II. So it's got a bit of history to it. It also saw me and my wife Roz around the oceans of the world with no other guide but this and the stars of heaven for 15 years. We made many Atlantic crossings with it and it never let me down. I can understand it. I can see it. I can see what it does. It's not like a black box of tricks. If anything goes wrong with that, there's nothing I can do. But this, I understand what's going on all the way. And here's how it works. Sun's over here right now. If I decide I'm going to take a sun sight, I'm out at sea, I would measure the angle of the sun and the horizon using this. Like so. With micrometer for fine adjustment. Well, I'm going to put the sun down onto the river bank, and here it goes, plop, quick fine adjustment, swing the sextant to get it right, and there it is, and it's reading, uh, oh, I haven't got my glasses on, 20 degrees and 51 and a half minutes. 51 and a half minutes of arc. Every decimal point of arc, and I'm saying it's 0.5, every decimal point of arc is just 200 yards at the equator. That's all it is. The thing is staggering in its accuracy when you think it's looking at something 93 million miles away. Anyway, here's how it goes. When I look at the sun with it, the sun reflects on this mirror. The mirror is set at an angle, I set the angle, and it bounces through those shades onto this mirror here. And this mirror reflects it back through the telescope into my eye. At the same time, there's a plane glass here alongside the mirror. And that is looking at the horizon. So what I see when I look through the telescope is the horizon and the sun sitting somewhere near it as I move the index bar. As I fine it down, I can pull the sun down till it's exactly on the horizon. And then it's just a matter of doing a few simple sums and I can tell exactly what angle the sun is subtending at the centre of the earth at that time. Using that, I enter the tables and ultimately that will give me a position line. Just the one. It doesn't give me a position, but it'll give me a position line on the chart. All I need is two of those and I've cracked it. So you might say, well you need two heavenly bodies, not just one. Well, ideally that's what you get, and with the stars you might have five or six, even seven I managed once, but with the sun you can't do that. But what you can is this, you can measure its angle, say at midday, and get one position line, at midday that'll be a latitude. Do it again three hours later, and put another position line on the chart. You know how far you've gone in those three hours and which direction you went in. All you have to do is shunt the position line back to the first one and where they cross is where you were at noon. You can do it in the morning and shunt it forward if you want. That's what most people do. The point is you get two position lines, one of them's now and the other one is transferred from earlier and there you are. That's your position. And that, in a nutshell, is what the guys are now having to learn as if they'd never learned it before. And so, <laughs> as Malvolio said, the whirligig of time brings in his revenges.